My thriving family, hey, I want you to enjoy today's message. I hope it just blesses you in an incredible way. But we decided to make a pivot and I, and I wanted to make sure you were informed uh, about something that we're launching called Bible You. Many of you are part of my Unleash Your Calling Challenge and you heard me talk about this program, Bible You, being inside of my mentorship programs. And we got requests from so many people saying, can I just get that program? So we did, we decided if there are people that want to take their understanding of the Bible to the next level, we want to make this available. Man, I'm so excited about this program. One of the number one questions that we get is, how is this different from EDS? And EDS is an incredible program, but Everyday Seminary, which is what EDS stands for, had one module on the Bible. In Bible U, every module is about the Bible. We're helping you understand it, but also we're helping you interpret it and apply it. Called this hermeneutics and exegesis. How do you take a document that's been written thousands of years ago and interpret it in a way and apply it in a way where it's relevant to your everyday life? We want to help you with that. We want to help you explain it. Whether you're trying to explain it to friends, family, or critics, or whether you're a Bible teacher like me and you say, I just want to, I want to do a better job at teaching the Bible. This is what Bible U is about. It's a 14 week program. Registration is only gonna be open for about a week. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing so many of you as a part of it. We just, you asked for it and we're bringing it to you. And so you can check out the web address that's coming up on the screen. It gives you more information about the program and hopefully we'll see you on the other side. All right, enjoy the message. What's up, everybody, and welcome to Thrive, where we believe that there are three ways you can live your life, sinking, surviving, and thriving. Level one, sinking. Level two, surviving. Level three, thriving. And we believe, based on the powerful proclamation seen in John 10, where Jesus said, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but I've come that you might have life and have it more abundantly or have it to the full. And we, we believe Jesus isn't just talking about abundance in life there. He's talking about abundance of life. He's talking about the quality of your life. And we believe that quality, that John 10, 10 life is a life we call thriving. And uh, I'm excited to have you with us today and shout out to everybody that is watching us live. Hey, as always, I just need to pause for the calls and go over a couple of things. Um, wait a minute. Some you, you guys are saying you can't see. Okay. Uh, you guys are saying you can't. Oh, you can. Can you hear me, though? You can't see me. I can see me. Can you hear me? Okay. <laughs> I think it said hi. Okay. I think my thing is just a. Just, just a delay. <laughs> okay, there I am. All right. <laughs> Somebody say hi, Drake. Uh, but anyway, hey, just a couple of things really quickly, guys, we want to uh, want to remind you of. And that is, number one, that uh, it's important for you to help me help others. And I want to know who's going to help me tonight. If you're going to help me, say me. And that is, as I give out some, as I give out points and as I um, release sticky statements and things of that nature that you guys put those in the chat. Okay. Uh, some of what I do in teachings like this is extemporaneous. And so that's why it's not always lower thirds and things of that nature, because even though I got notes and stuff like that, a lot of this is just like downloads as I'm teaching. So we would typically use, you know, lower thirds and slides and things like that to support, but with Thrive, we just I just flow in a different kind of way. So I need you to help me help others by making sure you're putting the points and things like that in the chat. And also, if you are not subscribed to this channel, subscribe and please like the video because that helps us put this in front of as many people as possible. Well, let's get to work. I'm excited about tonight. We're in a series, guys, called Embracing Excellence. And tonight I want to talk to you around this subject called The Blueprint. 
And this is a revelation that I got. I want to share with you. You see, I got my pen in my hand because this revelation I got, we're going to the board tonight and everything. This is, is, is it all right if we treat this almost like a master class tonight? Like I got, I got some revelation and I think, and I hope it's going to cause a revolution in your life family. Okay. So the blueprint. Now I want to read something to you found in Hosea chapter number four, verse six, Hosea first, chapter four, verse six. So for note takers, um, cause someone may have missed that. Put that in the chat for me. Hosea chapter four, verse number six. And this is what it says. This is, this is what God's saying to Hosea, my people, whose people, God's people, not, not just any people. God say this, this is so interesting. My people are destroyed. Wait a minute. So he's saying these are people that but be- so those that belong to the divine. God's saying are being destroyed. Now, watch this when he's talking about destruction, we're going to get into that a little bit. I don't want to I don't I don't want to make us I don't want us to make assumptions about what God is articulating here. OK, but this is this is what he says. My people are destroyed being unraveled, being adversely impacted, slowly and incrementally sliding into a place and to a space of despair, dis- not just disease, dis-ease, and yes, dysfunction. Come on, my people are being destroyed. They're my people. Watch this. I love them and they love me, yet they're being destroyed. Why? Because of a lack of morals. Nope. That's not what Hosea says. Do morals matter? Yes. But that's not what Hosea specifically is referring to here. My people are destroyed. Watch this for a lack of prayer. Nope. That's not what he says. Is prayer absolutely important and essential? Yeah, we taught you this, right? Sam Stone says you cannot expect, you should not have an expectation for God to do some things independent of prayer that he only promised to perform as a result of prayer. The book of James puts it this way. We have not because we ask not. I always attempt to tell you that asking is your business. God's will is his business. So what do you do? Ask for what you want. He'll determine whether or not it's his will. So it's prayer important. Yes. But Hosea saying here, my people are destroyed, not because of a lack of prayer. Come on. He says they are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. You guys have heard me say this. Come on here. Whatever area you are ignorant in is an area you suffer in. And the enemy operates in the arena of ignorance. The enemy uses ignorance as a weapon of mass destruction. Listen to me. My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. I'm going to say that one more time. When he says my people are being destroyed for a lack of knowledge, he says, I want you to catch this. He said they are uninformed or misinformed. They don't know it. They don't have information at all in this area or they don't have accurate information. And I'm going to tell you something. The text here is very clear in Hosea chapter four. That that watch this. These people were uninformed or misinformed. Listen to me. Listen to me. They were uninformed and misinformed. I don't know if y'all ready for this. They were uninformed and misinformed as a consequence of submitting to the instruction of people that they trusted. See, when you, (laughs) oh my gosh. God speaking through Hosea here in chapter Hosea, in chapter four, verse six, contextually, he's talking to priests. He is talking to spiritual leaders. 
And he is telling spiritual leaders that my people are not functioning and flowing in a way that is consistent with my original intent because of you priest, because of you teacher, because of you spiritual leader, because of you influencer, because you pastor, watch this, because you parent, watch this, because you coach, watch this, because you counselor, because you, watch what he says, you've rejected knowledge. So he's saying, those of you, he, this is scary, Hose, <laughs> this isn't in this part of the passage, at least, a direct a prophetic proclamation to the people. It's a prophetic proclamation to priests. It's a prophetic proclamation to those that were supposed to be doing the instructing and the teaching. And God is saying to them, my people are being destroyed because you are rejecting knowledge. So you don't have the accurate information that you have so that you can engage in dissemination to them and education so that they can get a revelation that's going to cause a revelation in their life. He says, you don't know. So you're teaching them out of your ignorance. And they're trusting that you've done your research. They, they, they trusting that you put your ear to my mouth. He says, there are things. Whoo, there are ways my people have under there are ways you've understood things. There are ways you've articulated things. There are convictions that you've held. He says that I've tried to get you to revisit and try to get you to expand. And he says, but you you rejected that. And, and as a result of you rejecting it because it made you uncomfortable, because it made you uh, assume that you were insulting those that gave it to you. You rejected it. This is interesting, guys. So, so why is this important? Hmm. It's important because in this series, Embracing Excellence, this is what I want you to wrap your head around. Your ignorance gets in the way of your excellence. Did you hear me? I said your ignorance gets in the, come on, our ignorance gets in the way of our excellence. Here's the root word of excellence, excel. Excel, I've been anointed to excel. I've been empowered to excel. I've been equipped to excel. But I cannot excel. If I am not willing, now watch this now. I want y'all to catch me. If I am not willing to relook at religious truths that have been handed to me. Now I'm getting ready to say something, guys. I prom I feel like this is revelation now, okay? Uh, ah. <laughs> <gasps> All right. So I'm, try, I'm trying to figure out like I, I, <laughs> the way I frame things is important to me. And so I want to frame this in a way where I'm clear and, uh, and where, where it's not insulting. But I'm just going to say it. It's only on a, in my experience. I'm just speaking from my experience. In my experience, in over 20 years of past 20 years of ministry, uh, this is what I've seen. That what most people believe about the Bible isn't what the Bible says. What most people believe about the Bible is what somebody told them the Bible says.
somebody just give me like a head blowing emoji right there. If that's like, if that's resonate, resonating with you in the chat, just drop a head blowing emoji. Just like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Just, just drop that in there. No, think about that. I'm going to say that again. What most people believe about the, or many people in my experience, believe about the Bible is not what the Bible says. It is what someone taught them the Bible says. And Hosea says, my people are destroyed. And so when this is what happens, guys, when I, and I'm telling you this because this is something I'm sure it's something I've dealt with in my own life, but it's also it is also reflective of what I'm saying is reflective of a lot of the resistance that that I deal with from time to time when I'm attempting to teach. And, and that is there are times when I'm holding on to what I believe I, what I believe the Bible says, but it's not what the Bible says It's what somebody told me the Bible says. And then when um, I get introduced to what the Bible actually says, I'm, I reject what the Bible actually says because I'm holding on to what somebody told me the Bible says. So if you ask, come on now. So if we ask the average believer, you know, what does the Bible say about your mind? We know what somebody said the Bible says. Like someone say, the Bible says God will keep me in peace. No, that's that's not that's not what it says. It says thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him. So if my mind is not stayed on him, then my mind will not be kept in perfect peace. So my fight for peace is not a fight for peace. My fight for peace is in my fight to keep my mind stayed on the Prince of Peace. Y'all come on here. Did you hear what I just said? Gosh. That's what the Bible actually says. But if I'm living my life without that knowledge. That that area that I'm uninformed in will be an area that I suffer in. It means I can be saved. But settling mentally. If I'm not accurately informed, if I'm not given, come here, the blueprint. Which is the Bible. In that area. If I ask the average person. Are, are y'all okay? See, and here's the thing, guys. It's not just a matter. It's not just a matter of intimacy. I think what I'm trying to get us to see here is that we can be intimate with the Father. We can be sincere in our intentions. But experience some, we could experience destruction or we can be living suboptimally in areas that God wants us to thrive in. Now, I'm get, let me go to the board because I want to show you this. I, 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 want, I want to show you something, okay? I want to show you something. Here it is. I got a couple things on the board. Okay. Um, Watch this. Whatever this is, this is this is interesting. Whatever area I'm ignorant in, as it relates to the blueprint, 
whatever area I'm ignorant in about what the Bible actually says about these areas of my life will be an area that I suffer in. So right now, this is what I want you to do. Spiritual one, emotional two, relational three, financial four, professional five. I want you to put, give me a number right now. Give me one number that, so if if you're thriving the most spiritually, put one. If you if you feel like the emotional area of my life is thriving the most now, I want you to put two in the chat. If you feel like the relational area of my life, my relationships, that's thriving the most now, I want you to put three. If you feel like the financial arena of my life now, I misspelled that. If you feel like the financial arena of your life, if you're in Daniel's day, you know I can't spell. If you feel like you're thriving there most now, put put uh, four. If you feel like you're thriving the most professionally, put five. Now, I just want you to put a number associated with each of, with each of these words that lets me know where you feel like you're thriving the most. And I'm getting ready. I'm getting ready to share something with you now. I'm getting ready to share something with you. Here it is. Here it is. So God has given us a blueprint to excel in these, because these five areas really make up the five major compartments of your life. So if I say, if, if I say God's changing, changed my life, I'm saying he's changed me spiritually, he's changing me emotionally, he's changing me relationally, changing me financially, changing me professionally. Okay, here's the issue now. All right. God's given us a blueprint to excel spiritually, emotionally, relationally, financially, professionally. But if I am excelling in one of those areas. And not any of those areas and not all of those areas. I'm settling. I'm going to have to come back and reteach all of this because some of y'all say y'all missing some of this. I said, if I am. If I am. Let's say just thriving emotionally. Not that it's always going to be perfect, but if I'm just settling for that. Now, watch this. We are going to have seasons where we feel like we're winning in one area and not in another. But if I am just settling, guys, if I'm just settling. For just thriving in one area. The majority of my life. I'm settling. When God's given me a blueprint. He's given me a blueprint. I don't want you to miss this, guys. Now, I'm getting ready to say something. It might disrupt some revelation that's been handed to you. If you really do, I don't know if y'all ready for this. I don't know if you're ready for this. If you're really doing good, because most people in the chat put number one. That's what happened. Most people in the chat put number one. So they say I'm thriving spiritual. That, so that, that was the number I got the most. This is what I want you to see. If my understanding of spirituality is based on what the Bible actually says, not what somebody told me the Bible actually says, then I'd be also thriving in two through five. Because if my if I'm practicing, come on here, if I am practicing my spirituality from a kingdom perspective, if I'm I'm doing it the king's way, guys, then I'm telling you right now, then 
what happens with me spiritually, it affects what's going on with me emotionally. It affects what's going on with me with re relationally. It affects what's happening financially. It, it affects what's happening professionally. Am I making sense here? That when I am thriving spiritually from a biblical perspective, because here's the thing, very often our understanding of spirituality is limited and relegated to the moral part of our life. So it's like, so if I'm doing good morally, I'm doing good spiritually, which, which isn't always the case. When I'm doing good spiritually, I will be doing good morally, but people can be doing good morally and not doing good spiritually. Here's the point that I'm making though, that when you have spiritual growth, true spiritual growth means that the spirit of God is now, excuse me, the, the spirit of God and the scriptures from God are now guiding and governing these other areas of your life. So we gotta, we have to stop defining spirituality in a compartmentalized fashion where what happens with me spiritually has absolutely no impact on how I am emotionally. And I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you the danger of this. When we compartmentalize our understanding of spirituality in this way, this is what ends up happening, guys. What ends up happening is this. You go to the Bible to get help spiritually, and you go to the world to get help with numbers two through five. Come on. I know it's tight, but it's right. When you do not understand spirituality from a biblical perspective, you go to the world, you go to the Bible to get help for number one, your spirituality. But people, but most people or many people are not taking their emotional cues from scripture. They are not. Because there are tons of things and I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about mental illness here. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about emotional wellness. Which are two different things. So all we can be born with all of us broke. Like there are people who are born and uh, their body doesn't quite function properly. And the same thing can happen to the brain. So I'm not talking about mental illness when I'm talking about the emotion. I'm talking about emotional wellness. And there are many who are taking their emotional cues from culture, not from scripture, because they don't even know that there's a blueprint in the Bible for emotional wellness. Watch this. And. And if people are exposed and if some people are exposed to what scriptures say, they hold on to the information that they had in the past and they reject the revelation that God's trying to give them in the present. Because the scripture says a whole lot about what to do with as it relates to our emotional life. In Philippians chapter four, Paul talks about this. Paul talks about what we think about. He says, whatever's good, whatever's lovely, whatever's of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. So he tells us not to allow our mind. And I know it's difficult from time to time to do this practically, but the Apostle Paul clearly tells us, don't let your mind go down this, go to this downward spiral. So don't let that happen. We are thinking about all of these negative things. He said, don't do that. Think about that. So there's so much in the book that helps us emotionally. There's so much in the book that helps us relationally. Oh, man. Bible says there's a friend that's six closer than a brother. So that's think, think about that. So let's say someone says, I want friends. Here's the blueprint. He who wants friends must first, must first, 
must first must first show himself friendly. See, come on. <laughs> he who wants friends must first show himself friendly. Talks us about toxic relationships. It tell, the Bible tells us who not to argue with. It tells us it tell now watch this. Here's the thing. It tells us to exercise discernment before you make investments, investment of your time, investment of your treasure, investment of your talent, investment of your energy. This is what the Bible teaches about relationships. I, I talk about in relational intelligence. Everybody is. Oh, we owe everybody love. We do not owe everybody investment. That there should be some discernment. Jesus put it this way, Matthew 7, 6. Don't give that which is holy to the dogs, neither cast your pearls among swine. That's the book. Discernment before investments. Because if you make investments of your time, your talent, your treasure without discernment, that eventually leads to resentment. Whenever I see somebody that's stingy with their gifts in the present, I know they've been wounded in the past. I'm going to say that one more time. I said, when, likely, very likely, whenever I see someone who's stingy with their gifts, the utilization of their gifts in the present is because they've been wounded in some way in the past. This is just facts. And guys, I don't want I don't want us to feel bad here. This is not to feel bad here. God is shining light on something. He's trying to expose us that many of us, if we're honest, we're like like we can quote scriptures. But when it comes to these five areas I just listed, many of us are clueless on what the book actually has to say about these areas. If I were to ask average believers, what is the scriptural blueprint? And, and here's what happens, guys, when I don't want to get too deep here, but uh, the, the, the word Bible in Latin, which is a dead language, but it, it's Biblos and it, and, it, and it means the book. It, it's not just a book. It's the book. So they're gonna, they're, there are a lot of a books out there. But this is the book. It is the book that trumps all books. It is the, the Supreme Court. It is sola scriptura. It is the it is the it, it, it is the standard of truth. That serves as a filter that we put all other information through to determine whether or not that information is true. That's this book. And what happens is many people are living their lives. God's people. I'm talking about God's people now living their lives, experimenting. Well, let me try this. Let me try that. I'm not, I'm not going to get specific because people, we live in a really hypersensitive uh, era now. So I'm not going to get too specific because people get, uh, yeah, whatever. But people, people be doing all sorts of things now to try to get peace. Peace in their mind, peace in their house, peace in their environment. Why? Experimenting. Because because we're, we're not <laughs> ooh, I'm not going to go there. Because we don't know what the book says in these areas. Financially. No clue. Here, here's something, guys, we, we just I'm, out, I'm already out here now. Somebody just put go ahead in the chat. Just put go ahead. I'm already out here now. Just, just, uh. And for many of us, this is what we learned about money in church. Give it. See, that's 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 too that's too real. That's financially that that's 
That's kind of what we learn. Give it. But that's not all the Bible says about it. The Bible says make it. Make it first. Paul says, if a man won't work, he won't eat. Paul talks about working with your hands. Bible talks about how to make it. Bible talks about how to move it. Giving it to God first. So giving is not incorrect. But if that's all we're teaching, that's incomplete. See, the only thing. So it's one thing to teach sowing and reaping. It's another thing to teach what the Bible says about how to reap. I taught I taught this in the Unleash Your Calling Challenge. Reaping is work. If you've ever planted a garden, then, you know, sowing is work and reaping is work. But you would be amazed at how many people feel bad about reaping. You can't sow if you don't reap. Are are y'all here? I said you can't sow if you don't reap. Can't sow if you don't read. But the Bible has so much, so much to say about this. It talks about the, the correlation between laziness and resources. He says, you see a person that's lazy, he says poverty will come up on them like an armed bandit. Like they're being robbed. It'll come and strip away their dignity and and strip away uh, their valuables and and, and strip away their sense of self. Professional. There are people, it's it's scary to me. They're like 99% of people aren't going to work in a church. But very few people are biblically connecting their work in the marketplace to the Bible. So if you believe God can send people to third world countries, which we do, why can't we believe God also send people to, uh, so if he can send them to the third world, why don't we believe God can send people to the medical world? Why don't we see believe God can send people to the financial world? Why don't we do believe that God can send people to the to the world of law? All mission fields, do we need to do mission work? Yes. Does God have a unique place in his heart for the poor and the powerless? Yes. Is that the only world God sends people to? No. If some people are not going into some of these other worlds and excelling in some of these other worlds, they're not in position to make a difference in the third world. Guys, we've been called to look, I could just spend, I got to just I just got to stop. It's just like it's been 45 minutes already. I just, I just got to stop because uh, it's it's. Here's the here's the point. The. I just I want to pronounce this over you prophetically. It's time to stop experimenting. People try if I'm watching Christians try everything. I'm like, what are we doing? We try everything emotionally. We try everything relationally. Try everything financially. Try everything professionally. When God's given us a blueprint to excel. 
In Matthew chapter 7, Jesus tells a parable. And he says, there's a foolish man. He says, there's a, there's a wise man and a foolish man. He says, wise man, foolish man built his house on sand. Wise man built his house. This is, well, I'll put it this way. Jesus said, he who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice, I will liken unto a wise man who built his house upon a rock. And when the rain came, Matthew 7, the floods descended, that house stood. He says, but whoever hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice. Notice he did not say, watch this, the person that doesn't hear the words. He says, those that hear the words and does not put them into practice. He said, I will liken him unto a foolish man who built his house on sand. And watch this. The rain came, the flood descended, the wind blew, and great was the fall of that house. Listen to me, guys. Both houses looked the same. Look at me. Both houses looked the same. Both houses looked the same until the storm came. And then when the storm came, one house withstood it and the other house crumbled because one was built on the rock. What's that? Unchanging truth. The other was built on sand, which represent the ways and the concepts of the world. And what does sand do? It shifts. Like, so one day I got to do this to get peace. And the next day I got to rub this to get the spirits out of my house. And then the, 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 uh, the next day I got to say this. And then the next day I got to burn this. It's like this, this confusing. That sand is shifting. And it is not that the Bible doesn't have the answers. It's not that the Bible is irrelevant. It's just many of us have not seen its relevance. The average person can quote scriptures that have nothing to do with these five areas of their life. Did you hear what I just said? I said the average person can quote scriptures that have absolutely nothing to do with these five areas of their life. And scripture as a consequence and as a result is not forming, it is not shaping, and it is not transforming these areas of their lives. Family, I'm going to get out of here, but we can't, we can't excel. So when I'm talking about excellence this month, I'm not just talking about like, uh, next week I'm going to talk about, um, I'll probably talk about Sheba and 1 Kings 10 and what excellence does, but it's like, I'm not even going to bother this, but just a little bit. <laughs> but um, when I talk about excellence, I'm not talking about aesthetics and I'm not just talking about cleanliness and all that's important. I'm not just talking about order and organization, even though that's important. That's not just what I'm talking about, guys. I am talking about excelling. And we can't do that without the blueprint. Now, this is what's scary. If I don't know. Now, uh oh, I can't believe I'm going here, but we're here. I'm, I'm out here. I'm out here. This is what's scary. Almost everybody listening to me at some point or another, you gave somebody some advice. And you probably gave advice to someone that you trust. Some of you are actually teachers like you. You do Bible studies or you, you explain the Bible to people or you, you, I mean, this is what's scary. So if I'm advising somebody and scripture's not informing the way I manage these five areas of my life, what am I telling them? Am I giving them sand or rocks? Even if I give an opinion, I want to give an opinion that's informed by scripture. So uh, uh, listen, guys, this is not to beat us down, beat, beat us down. This is to grow us up. This is like, um, remember, God's challenges are God's compliments. God's challenges are God's compliments. So whenever God sends a word to challenge you, to challenge me, I need to receive that challenge as a compliment. It means he sees something in me 
uh, that's greater than where I am now. He sees a version of me that is superior to the version of me that's currently existing. It means that he sees the Abraham in the Abram. It means he sees the Israel in the Jacob. It means he sees the Simon in the Peter. I want you to see this, ladies and gentlemen, that God's challenge to you is a compliment. And he's, he's, he's challenging us. Hey, come on now. Wait a minute. What are y'all doing? Since y'all just engaging in religious exercises, quoting scriptures that relate to crisis, because that's what most of, oh gosh, that's what, that's where a lot of our scriptural memorization comes in, comes into play. Crisis, like in giving, like, <laughs> Uh, I, I'm just leaving it alone because this is I don't want to get in trouble here. But the, <laughs> but the point that I'm making is. Most of the problems people come to you with, if you're giving people advice, most time it's either something's going on with them spiritually, emotionally, relationally, financially, or professionally. Am I right? Or am I right? Right. So but if I if the Bible's not informing. My perspective, spiritually, emotionally, relationally, financially, and professionally, what am I telling them? What advice am I giving? We got to get out of here, ladies and gentlemen. This is the reason I'm done. This is the reason. I think we're closing this tonight. This is the reason. I'm doing something called Bible you. And some of you who are serious about excellence. You need to be a part of this program. I don't think I'm running this program again. I've done EDS. I've done Bible you. Um, I don't think I'm doing this again. Once this is done, we'll probably put it up. I'm going to be doing I'm going to be throwing all of my energy into my I3, my TCP and my Daniel's Den. And there's a there's another component of Daniel's Den that I'm going to add. And so people will be able to go to Daniel's Den and get the coaching and mentoring program or get the school of the Bible or get Daniel's Den leadership. Like I got this huge vision for that. I'm going to be leaning into that. So this is the last time I'm even going to be running this. Um, but uh, for those of you that are really like, man. I, 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 I see this in a way I've never seen it before. I thought Bible use just about me learning the Bible. Now I see Bible use about me actually transforming and changing my life. It's about me excelling. It's about me understanding and applying and interpreting. About I'm going to take this five-fold framework here, and we're going to be walking people through this in Bible U. So this isn't just like regurgitation of information. It isn't just like seminary. It's It's... It is it is unique. It is different. It is transformative. It is relevant. And um, you can go to like Bible U dot Academy. I think that's it if you're interested in that. But that's why I'm doing Bible U. But anyway, the point that I'm making, guys. Is that we can't. I don't want this series on excellence just to be about my clothes. I iron. Or this external facade. I want it to be about an internal transformation. God's given us the blueprint. It's time to follow. it. If you want the blueprint, meet me in Bible U. First and last time I'm running this program. Man, I want to thank y'all for hanging out with me tonight. Uh, I, I, I had an actual procedure this morning and I didn't even know how my voice or whatever was gonna was gonna do they had a camera all down there and but anyway all is well thank god but the point uh point i'm making is man i'm so grateful to be able to do this tonight and hope it added value to you i'm gonna i'm gonna wrap up i went a little bit longer than i should but i'm super passionate about this this subject and i know how important it is guys for us to get this right family all right so in advance i want to thank you for your generosity each week you guys sowing into this ministry man and uh, if you believe this is an important teaching ministry, say yes. No, for, for real. Like, if you believe, man, well, Hannah, this is really important. Like, we need, the body needs this. I want you to put yes in that chat. And your, your generosity helps us, helps us do that. So thank you in advance for your giving. You know, you know the ways to do that, that we put it up every week. And we want you to make sure that you are just aware of the different ways that you can be faithful. 
All right, guys, we love you. Uh, hey, if you're going to be in the Atlanta area on this coming Sunday, May 15th, 6 p.m., we're going to be at the Coca-Cola Roxy at Battery Park. It's by the Braves Stadium. We got you all straight now. All you got to do is park your car in the parking garage, walk on over and get this incredible experience. Travis Green's going to be with us. He's going to be uh, our special musical guest. Change Worship is leading us in worship. I got a message y'all called. I'm sick of this. What? So I want you to <laughs> I want you to be there. And then um, the 22nd of May, I think that's, yeah, the 22nd of May, we'll be back in person in New Jersey. And I'm starting a new series there called Self-Sabotage. Self-Sabotage. Uh, so that's going to be great also. So, man, love you guys so much. I want to pray you, pray us out of here. Remember, those of you who are ready to take the next step to change your life. You're going to join me in Bible U. This is the first and the last time I'm running this program. We might make turn it into a course and make a course available later. This is the first and last time I'm running this program like this. Registration ends at midnight tonight for Bible U. Midnight tonight for Bible U. And um, not having a blueprint is costing you spiritually, emotionally, relationally, financially, and professionally. And I think this is an investment you need to make in you. All right, family, love you. Father, thank you for giving us the power of your spirit and the blueprint of your scriptures. And we pray that you would empower your people to walk out these principles that we might excel to the glory of God and for the good of men and women. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. See you next week. Family. I hope you enjoyed tonight's message, family. Listen, really quickly, just in case you missed it on the front end, I'm super excited to announce a program that we're making available that we had not planned on making available. It's a program we created to go inside my mentorship programs, my coaching program and my inner circle because we felt like for people to carry out their purpose, whether in ministry or the marketplace, they needed a higher level understanding of the Bible. But we got word from so many people who said, I'm not sure if I want the other stuff, but I want that Bible you. <laughs> and so we decided to, to, to take it out of the program. Well, not, not take it from them, but to make it available to everybody. It's called Bible U. And uh, one of the number one questions we get is, how is this different from EDS? Uh, first of all, it is different. It's very different. EDS was an amazing program. But I think if you liked EDS, you're gonna love Bible U because EDS had one module on the Bible. The rest was theology, systematic theology, practical theology, soul care, decision-making. This Bible U is all Bible. Every module is Bible. It's a 14 week program and we help you do three things. Understand the Bible. What kind of document in it? What is it? Where are its, what are its sources? Uh, we help you not only understand it, we also help you apply it and interpret it. This, we call this exegesis and hermeneutics. And then finally, we help you explain it. We equip you to explain it better to friends, family, and critics, but we also equip you to be a better teacher of the Bible if you're currently doing that or if you feel called to do that. So again, 14 week program, registration is open right now. I wanted to let you know because the cart's gonna be closing soon. Not sure when we're gonna open it up again. Go to the web address that's on the screen. That way you can see all the information and hopefully answer some of your questions regarding whether or not this experience is for you. Listen, if you're ready to take your life to the next level, it begins with taking your understanding of the Bible to the next level. I hope to see you in Bible U. Well, listen, thank you for watching thrive. I want you to make sure you subscribe to this channel so that you don't miss any of our teachings. And remember, you can watch me live at Thrive every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Take care. I'll see you soon.